Welcome to Comfy Hour number two. Alright, so, I'm just the guy. I cannot remember what I was going to make the video about. I went back through the first part and the second part of the racism video, and it's like magically not there. It's like the camera didn't even record it. So, um, this is my final video, and I'm going to um, make it short and sweet. I don't know... If you're not, if you're not mixed, you know, we're just going to make this a part three. If you're not mixed, it's going to be kind of hard for you to relate to anything I said in the first two videos. Or even the prep show, even. You know. And if by any chance, the grace of God, I happen to remember what I was going to make the video on, this will automatically change to that video. I'm not sure if it was acting or something else, but it was definitely something important. But I can't remember what the hell it was to save my life. And the thing about racism, it's harder on mixed kids than it is on non-mixed kids. So we're just gonna stick with the racism shit. And we'll end this as fast as possible. Now, the reason why I'm telling you that racism is harder on mixed kids than non-mixed kids is because we have to look in the mirror. And we have to figure out where the hell we fit. You're non-mixed kids. Y'all don't have that issue. Y'all don't have to look in the mirror and say, Am I black or white today? Am I Native American today? What am I today? That's like something y'all will never have to deal with. Y'all don't have to go to school and try to fit in. You don't have to go to school and have the facts pointed out that you don't fit in, thrown in your face on a daily basis. We don't want you hanging around us, James, because you're not a real brother, you're a half-brother. Yeah, we don't, we don't want you hanging around us, James, because you're not white bread. You wheat bread. You ain't burnt toast. You ain't cardboard, but you're like wheat bread. You're that in-between slice. You're like the heel. You know, white on the inside, brown on the outside. Hey, I've been through some shit. <laughs> Trust me, there's a lot more people who can say the same thing, only using different food as their um, analogy. Thank you, Harold and Kumar. Twinkies. All Asians know about that one. I'm sure they don't laugh as hard as, as everyone else, but yeah, they know about it. I'm sorry, I'm still thirsty. But that's all things, man. You know, <laughs> y'all don't have that. Y'all don't have that issue. You have to get up and go to class and, like, you got to sit by yourself because, you know, all the black kids over there, the white kids over there. And in Charlottesville, there were no natives in my schools, not in middle school or high school or grade school. So unless you counted me because I'm mixed with native, there were no natives. There were Indians, but they were the ones with the freaking dots, not the feathers. So, there were no natives at all. There were Muslim natives that were not the natives with the feathers. They were definitely the ones with the dots. Great people. But, um, even they had their own clique. I was lucky I had black and white friends to sit with me at lunch. 
Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Trey. But, um, now fitting in, being mixed. That is an adventure in itself. That literally is some shit. You know, I, I'm, I'm mad because it's kind of funny. It's kind of not. I'm mad. I'm, I'm smiling because I'm actually angry. It's kind of fucked up when you have to go to school and you're looking around and no one really wants to sit beside you because they don't know what the fuck you are. I'm not talking about gender-wise. They know I was a boy. But they're like, let's slide at you over here. And I shower regularly. I do not stink. I am against stinking. I've had some deodorant fails in the army at Fort Lee when I bought that bogus ass oil spice and this shit failed on me during the middle of a fucking PT. <laughs> now you see why I only have a degree. I only wear a degree or sure. They are the only ones that hold me. I will wear old spice, but not that generic shit. Anyway. <laughs> oh god. It is really, you know, I don't know how it works for mixed girls versus mixed boys, but it's a whole lot more acceptable if you're mixed and you're female. All right? So, Yahoo, mixed females, knock yourselves out. Mixed males, all right. Like, proving your blackness, man. I'm sure The Rock can relate. Proving your blackness is a thing. It literally is a thing when you are mixed with black, especially when you don't look black. And, you know, you look more not black. I was like, man, what the fuck is this dude, man? You'd be surprised at how many times I've heard this shit whispered under their breath. Man, why you bring that half-breed here? Man, what's up with that dude, man? He ain't even got nappy hair. His hair's all curly and shit, man. Is he even a dude? What's going on? He doesn't have much facial hair. I honestly could not grow facial hair until I was 15. And maybe 16. And then my mom wouldn't let me shave that shit off. Until I got like 18. I was like, well, fuck you. I'm grown now. This shit's got to go. And then, like, once I joined the military, I had to shave every fucking day. But I couldn't shave my body hair. The military would not let me shave my body hair. But they would let me shave my face hair. And I was like, the fuck, yo? It's like, nah, that shit clogs up the drains. We can't have anybody shaving their body hair. It wasn't like they gave us body inspections, but our showers until 9 o'clock were two minutes. After PT and before breakfast, our showers were two minutes. There's barely enough time to get soap on a rag, and you have 54 other men transferring through the shower. So yeah, your dicks are swinging everywhere. There's no time to do anything but soap the rag up, put, touch up your important parts, your underarms and your testicles, and your asshole and rinse the fuck out, and get the fuck out, and you're in like that. So when I'm in the shower at home, I relish my shower time. I soap the fuck out of my rag, yo. And military, we're very, very clean, but, you know, we, we take whore baths until fucking 9 o'clock. Because 9 o'clock's like, well, technically 8 o'clock, but 9 o'clock's bedtime and basic. So, yeah, yeah. You know, again, you know, off topic. But fitting in, now fitting in when you are mixed, it is a bitch when you are a dude. I don't know how it works for a female. I'm not gay. I have nothing against trans and all that other shit. I'm not going to date trans people. But at that same time, when you are a female, you can adapt faster and fit in when you are mixed versus when you are male. You have to prove your manhood. You have to prove your blackness. I've never had to prove my whiteness because I'm never going to be white. I've never been around enough natives to prove my nativeness, so I just had to prove my blackness. So I cuss a lot. But then the fact that I was also raised by military uncles and a father. My father wasn't in the military. He tried to go, but he couldn't go because he couldn't pass the physical, um, something about his eyes and some other shit. And my uncle, who's still alive, he went. He served in the army. I have two uncles, one on each side that went army, and my other uncles all went navy. So... I'm not a water rat. I hate water. If I'm not taking a bath or drinking that shit, it's no good for me. Anyway, I didn't want to go to the Marines because one of my siblings' parents was a Marine. And as much of an asshole as I am, he's triple that. So it's like, I don't want to blame the Marine Corps, but no, I don't want to be a Marine. Fuck that shit. I'm good with fucking Army. I love the Army. Anyway, so 
trying to fit in in all three school systems was just a bitch. Being a dude, just just not not gonna happen. No. Sometimes my hair was better than the girls' hair, so that that didn't help. <laughs> and my hair was way better than the boys' hair. That that didn't help. <laughs> you know, um, getting a haircut. Oh God, getting a haircut was awful. You guys saw the military picture in the other video. Getting a haircut just was fucking awful. When I after I post these things, by the way, and I get a chance to go back through that whatever I was supposed to actually do a video on I will do a video on if I remember what the fuck the video is supposed to be on but yeah um fitting in just uh the the gender barrier between fitting in being mixed male versus being mixed female is easier on females it's much easier on females females go to the bathroom together they compare parts men you know if I go to the bathroom I do not want you looking over the stall into my penis area. That is just not fucking acceptable. It's like, you know, now, again, in the army, we you know we had stalls for, like, everything but the shower. <laughs> right? Like, we, we had to take a shit. Wasn't a big deal. We we had more toilets and urinals, urinals in Bravo and in Delta. I wasn't in golf but, like, a half a day. So... <laughs> But we had, like, bathroom stalls. We had a shit ton of fucking stalls. We had maybe two urinals, but everything else was fucking toilets. We basically set up like a female's bathroom. Only females don't have urinals. So we had fucking toilets. So you could take a shit. You could have your privacy and take a shit and all that crap. But when you went to the bathroom, when we was in Bravo, we didn't have, um, like, unnoticeable stalls. You know, there was, like, maybe a short brick wall between the bathrooms and you could like see chest high i'm short i'm five three so you know i was just like at eye level for the wall but still there are tall people when dicks were in my face and that was not cool because some people were taller than the fucking wall and somehow or another they magically found a way to shower next to me yeah that fucking sucked it only got worse when i got to delta because everybody there was fucking taller than me too <laughs> Oh god, but yeah, when you're feeling in mixed as a man, that you have to prove your manhood, and when people can see that you're not all the way black, they point that shit out. Like, yeah, you ain't a real nigga, man. You just half breed, you know. And there have been many times where I want to take my half breed fist and go to people's ass, well, just to show them, hey, doesn't matter what your ethnicity is, it matters how your skill level handles. But fighting is not always the solving problems. As you can see, I'm not comfortable with saying that because sometimes you just gotta hit a motherfucker in the mouth. I'm sorry. I'm not here to promote violence. This is fact speech, not hate speech, just in case YouTube doesn't let this video play. But sometimes you do just gotta hit somebody in the mouth because the quickest way to shut them the fuck up. I'm sorry. You know, I also learned that in the army. I also learned this thing called sock party. Do not do something to become the victim of a sock party. Now, in Bravo, I was never the victim of a sock party. In Delta, I was never the victim of a sock party. And in golf, I wasn't in golf long enough to cause any problems. I did fuck up twice in the military. Once in golf and once in Delta. Not golf. Yeah, definitely golf. So, three times. <laughs> so, in Bravo, I um, saluted a Black Beret. And he was actually a graduate. I thought he was like a warrant officer or something. Because when we had to send our stuff back home, I saluted a warrant officer in a burgundy beret. And he's like, you guys aren't in uniforms. Like, you know, drill sergeant, we're here at the post office. We have to send stuff home because of such and such. I was like, $4 short. So thank you to Bible because he helped me pay for my shit to go home. And unfortunately, my mom bought the shit in the house. When I told her about the cockroaches that was as big as a cell phone and don't bring the shit in the house, she still bought the shit in the house. No, the roaches were not there, thank God. But anyway, moving on. Fort Benning, Georgia stays fucking hot. Just so did you know, in February, which is still winter, it was still fucking hot. Until like midnight. Anyway, moving on. Then fucking, um, and in, in, in when I got to Delta, I had learned all these cadences from Bravo, and I fucked this up. I got to singing everywhere I go, there was a drill sergeant there, and we got smoked. We, I didn't get a sock party, I didn't get a sock party. But I didn't know these guys weren't in as long as I was in. And I, here I am singing all these damn cadences from Bravo. And the Delta 
Joe Sergeant Jackson. Didn't want to hear that shit because we were doing police call. He said, oh, you think you're funny? I was like, no, Joe Sergeant. He's like, so, um, you know these guys are new. And I know you transferred from fucking Bravo, but you just got your, your entire fucking squad. You guys are going to get smoked. Pick up those rocks. Carry that rock from that end to that end. I want everybody to pick up a decent damn rock. I picked up the biggest rock I could find for my little ass hand. Everybody else follow suit except for one guy. One guy. It wasn't me. One guy picked up a fucking tiny ass rock. And he was like the biggest guy in the squad. And he started walking that rock. And Joe Sergeant Jackson said, Now just because this guy fucked up, now this guy gotta go fuck up. You do not fuck your battle buddies. Now go pick up a bigger rock. The rest of you, now you gotta do this shit four more fucking times around this fucking building. So we rock with a fucking rock around that building. I didn't sing any more cadences after that, by the way. I was apologizing to everybody when this shit was done. I was like, y'all, I'm sorry. I've been here for so long. I thought everybody knew the same cadences. It's like, man, we don't even know what the fucking cadence is. I said, yeah, um, I'm not gonna be the one to teach ya. And in turn, in turn, I got fucked over one more, one more time because Delta and Bravo have different policies that I was not taught when I was in Bravo. So, Joe Sergeant Armbert, much love, brother. He took my canteens. This wasn't because I was mixed. He took my canteens. Because apparently in Delta, they tied their canteens. In Bravo, they didn't. And I failed an inspection. Literally failed an inspection. And he's like, um, old dick. Yes, Joe Sergeant? Because that was my name, old dick. Because I was 37. So he, he, he starts inspecting my uniform. And he's like, you see your canteens? Drop your canteens. And so I was like, what does that mean, Joe Sergeant? It means drop your damn canteens. So he took my canteen out. And he dropped it. And it hit the ground. He said, why is your canteen not tied to your belt? I said, well, Joe Sergeant and Bravo, we never tied our canteens to our belt. And no one here told me to tie my canteen to my belt. So then he took my other canteen. And he threw that son bitch. <laughs> that son bitch way over there. He picked up my other canteen that he dropped and threw that son bitch way in another direction. And he said, now, this is what's going to happen. All of you are going to do push-ups except for old Dick here. Old Dick's going to go and retrieve his canteens. And you guys should not have fucked your battle buddy and told him to tie off his goddamn canteens. So I had to go fetch my canteens. So... I didn't really get them fucked that time. They got me fucked, and they got themselves fucked because I was from fucking Bravo. They were from Delta. They knew the drill from day one. I didn't, and nobody informed me at all. And so after that, you know, I'm pretty sure they were all thinking it was probably the fucking mixed guy. He's just fucking stupid because he's mixed. I've had those conversations where people have thought I was stupid because I'm actually mixed. Now... As I close this out, because I had a military flashback, I'm sorry about that. It was a good time, man. It was a great time. A great fucking time. Thank you, Drill Sergeant Albert. Thank you, Drill Sergeant Amisqua. And thank you, Drill Sergeant Haynes. Those are my three Delta family heroes. And thanks you to everybody in Delta. Everybody. And a couple of guys in Bravo. Especially Fusco and Lo. Anyway, moving on. You know, um, adjusting, adapting, being mixed. When you're a male, you literally have to prove whatever ethnicity that you fit into. And fitting in is not easy at all. And I had to prove my blackness more and more and more. And then I just said, you know what? <laughs> I'm just going to be mixed. You're either going to accept me or you're not. So that's how I'm going to close this. If you are mixed or biracial or multicultural like me, just be you. Accept yourself. Fuck everyone else. Thank you guys for watching. It's Comfort Havoc number two. Be seeing you.